Okay, in this video, we're going to jump away from code for just a minute to give you a brief overview of what edit mode is. We've already laid out some of the base classes that we're going to need. Some of the, the really fundamental groundwork has been done. But we were talking about it, and we were thinking, you know, we could take just a moment before we get into the real meat of the functionality and give them an idea of what they're going to be creating in edit mode. So that's what we're going to do here. Now, at this point, I'm going to assume everybody's seen the musical staff several times. Hopefully by now you've built something that you could play around with and you know what the game looks like. So what we've drawn for you here is kind of a loose representation of the musical staff with all of the tracks that you need for the different notes you're going to place. What Edimote does at its, at its heart, I guess, the, the key functionality of it is to take that staff and break it up into a grid that you can use to place notes with a variable degree of precision. Exactly. This is going to be basing on the rendering code we already have in place for our game mode. And it's going to be supplying some additional data so that we can break up time into a grid and place notes into that grid. That's right. So there's only one... It's not really a drawback. It's just kind of a way that... Uh, a workflow, I guess you got to, to work around. We're not going to be able to create a brand new song here. This is strictly edit mode. It's going to allow us to take a song that already exists, bring it in and change it around. Now, on that note, we do have free play mode, which we've already set with a save prompt. So if you need something brand new in order to edit... Go into free play mode, hit a drum just once, put down any one note, save that out, bring it straight into edit mode, and turn it into uh, the, the coolest drum solo you've ever seen in your life. And this limitation is purely an interface limitation. We've already seen in the past how creating a song from scratch is relatively easy to do. We've mm -hmm. got the song instances we can create at will, and we even set up the initial song files by running the song generator. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and from the coding standpoint, we have lots of things at our disposal for creating new songs. It's just that here with the interface being set up, the one limiting factor is being able to enter a name. Right. Otherwise, it would be trivial to go in and instantiate a new song right before you jump into edit mode, and you'd have your new blank song. I mean, if you wanted to, it seems like you could set up a special screen where when you edit, like if you jump into edit mode, you have your list of songs where you could choose to create a new song, which would be named like edit song 001 or something. But that's not the way we're handling this. I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. Exactly. We're just presenting the fact that there are lots of ways you could go about extending that. We're just trying to get the base functionality of an editor in place. That's right. Now, how is this actually going to work? So here's our musical staff. We've got to put notes down on this, and we don't just want to put them at random intervals. We don't want pixel accuracy because with pixel accuracy it's going to be really hard for you to get you know nice precise drum beats exactly we've already got the tick uh, resolution set up in our songs but we don't want to force the user to edit in a tick by tick mentality because those ticks represent a very fine slice of time it would be impossible for a human to look at the screen and count pixels just with the naked eye so what we're going to do is break the staff up into a grid before i even show that before we talk any further about that let's talk just for a second on exactly how edit mode is going to do what it does. You're going to have a cursor, a cursor that you can slide up and down the staff and slide between different tracks. So your cursor could be up here and you could be ready to drop a note on this track or your cursor could be bumped down to here. Now notice I'm always drawing this pretty much right in the center. This is not necessarily the way it has to be. You could you know, waggle your cursor all the way up to here and drop a note, and then walk across over to here and drop a note, and then walk across over to here and drop a note. The catch, though, is that we, want, we have to have some degree of snapping involved so that we can have an amount of precision. And we've already seen that in the free play mode, where we, allowed, we initially allowed the user to hit notes with tick-by-tick -tick accuracy, mm -hmm. but that made it very difficult to play notes exactly in time. It was very helpful to employ a form of snapping, mm -hmm. so that as long as the user hit a note within a tolerance, that note snapped exactly to the note one would be expecting. Exactly. So with that in mind, we are going to take the staff and break it up into a grid, and you'll be able to snap notes directly to points on the grid. So if I come in here and now I think it's all in how you look at it. Are you going to be putting notes within spaces on the grid or within points for the purpose of this drawing? I'm going to say we're going to put them in the blank spots just so that uh, it looks a little easier to read. But again, that's philosophical. Exactly. This is all just a matter of deciding that we have discrete locations that are visually bigger than mm -hmm. a given tick. So if we come in here, you could say, let's drop a note right here, and there's a note, and then we could drop a note right here. The point is that by setting up this grid, we have a certain degree of precision, so it's very easy for us to say, I need 
two different drums to play at the exact same time as we go down, which would be very hard without some kind of snapping. Now, this snapping is not going to be the same all the time. We're going to give you the ability to change its granularity. So if you want, you could have a really, really tight grid. So now you could have drums that are really close together and would require like really, really fast playback. While you're still retaining the grid placing mentality of if you still want two of these really fast notes to play at the exact same time, you still have the grid employed to do that. That's right. So that's what we're going to be setting up as we move forward with edit mode, the ability to set up an interface where you take the staff, bust it up into a grid, have a cursor that you can move around, and place notes. Now, talking just one extra second about that cursor, the way this is going to work is as you move your cursor around, let's say you move it to this grid space and you drop a note, then you move it over here and you drop a note and you think, you know what, the note before really should be brought up one grid space, you will be able to not only drop another note, but then go back and toggle this note to disappear. Exactly. You'll have the ability to both add and remove notes. And as you just described, it's going to function as a toggle. If you drop a note where a note already exists, it's going to remove that note. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you stay on a given grid slot, you'll just activate and deactivate the note for that slot. So there's a quick look at the stuff we're going to be doing inside of edit mode, uh, the type of functionality we're going to be adding. And with that, let's now move on and start putting this functionality into our code.